One of the brand new components for Hypotizer version 4 is Multi-Controller. Previously, the functionality in version 3 was found via the MIDI component, the Open Sound component, uh, the FAT controller, and more. However, we've merged all of those protocols into a single component that can not only receive that, in that information, but also send it as well. I'm going to take you through a simple demonstration of how to get the multi-controller component up and running and patched to an external device. To start with, in the controller tab, you'll see two sections, control sources, protocol coming into the software in order to make changes, and control targets, those values being sent from the system into external devices. Control sources gives you the ability to select an ArtNet input, a Disney Entertainment Automation Protocol, Green Hippo Automation Protocol, LabJack, MIDI, Open Sound Control, Pokies, and TCP. In the target section, slightly different options here, ArtNet, MIDI, Open Sound Control, a Pokies output, TCP sender, also a use UDP sender as well. But today, uh, we're going to start off with a nice, simple MIDI control of the software. So I select MIDI input, select OK, and the uh, MIDI control source will be added. As long as this device is connected to your system, uh, and if necessary, the drivers have been installed, you should be able to find it here in the MIDI input port. And there you can see the Behringer BCF2000 that I've got connected to my software uh, found in this drop-down box. I'm going to select that as a MIDI input port. And also, as it has motorized faders, I can also relay um, the signal back into the system if I make changes within the software, which is extremely useful, especially when using presets. You'll notice that now uh, the input and output has been uh, selected. Uh, you can also see that the uh, control source goes green. So it shows me that it is happily connected. It knows that it's um, connected to the system and can now be used. In order to patch the MIDI controller to the parameters within the software, we now switch over to the pin mappings tab. And in here, we can go in and start to add the pins that we want to control. I'm going to use two very simple pins, the level intensities of layers one and two. So easy to get to those. Layer one, mixer level. Layer two, mixer level. As you can see, it's added both of those pin mappings in. And uh, the next thing I'd like to show you, an extremely useful function of the new multi-controller component, uh, is the ability to be able to learn uh, your mappings from external devices. This was previously found in our MIDI component in Hypotizer version 3. However, in Hypotizer version 4, it is compatible with all protocols inside the component, which makes life a lot easier and a lot faster to get patched and up and running. I can also, as you'll see here, the little circles that can also be found in the HippoNet sidebar, I can use these and drop these onto the desktop just to make sure that they are the two things that I want to control. So we've got level intensity for layer 1, and level intensity for layer two. There we can see those are exactly the two things that I want to patch. So all I now need to do is to uh, select the learn mapping functionality like so, and simply move the fader on my MIDI device like so. And straight away you can see that's patched and is now controlling the level, in level intensity of layer one. Continue the process, but before I do that, just to show you, if I want to manually add a mapping, and you simply add the mapping option, you've got uh, five or six different options in here, text, index, MIDI, ArtNet, automation, and GPIO for more interactive systems. Um, however, again, it's much, much easier for me to go in and learn that mapping like so. So simply select learn mapping, go and find your next controllable fader, and there you can see We've got that patched in nice and easily. With each of those mappings, you'll see that you can go in and make a bunch of changes if necessary. So you can scale input values. Um, you can use default ranges uh, depending on what device you are using and also how you want it to uh, be affected within the software. But as far as getting everything patched in, uh, getting it being used, very, very straightforward. And you should be up and running in no time. 